Welcome back everyone, Jose21 Crisis here and today, guess what? We're playing some more Grand Prix World 2001. The previous episode, well technically there are two previous episodes. The previous episode was either the end of the 2002 season, which saw Prost uh, heroically win the Japanese Grand Prix to close out the season, a very successful season that was, or it was the build-up to 2003, depends on whenever you actually want to see the build-ups to seasons, which I do recommend you see the, the, the build-ups because I do show some important stuff and some interesting stuff like uh, who improved, like who I think or who the data shows is going to be the best team and so on and so forth. But this is the opening episode of 2003. We're going to be seeing some actual races on this one. This stuff here is it, it's exactly the same as the build-up episode, but uh, some things have changed on this one. Like I mentioned, I was going to make some offers, see, send some fillers, check who was interested in signing with us. In the number one driver slot, of course, I won the panis. I have not changed um, the offers. Like, I have not increased salary, raise bon the bonus, etc. I have not done so just yet. I'm going to do that. Uh, after the opening round, after Australia. Hopefully no one signs him, but if someone signs him, that's going to be sad. I'm just going to have to cancel one of my uh, one of the objectives of the season. So uh, I tried to get him for three years. He did not want to be here three years. At the very least, he accepted the number one driver, which of course he would, and accepted the team condition as it was. Everything is going to happen in Greece. As for second slot, I tried to resign Alonso, but he does not like the fact that right now he's on the number one driver slot. He's going to be transitioned to the number two driver slot. He does not like that. So, I'm going to try to convince him, but if that does not work, there's always Bordeaux. I, everything I have to do is just increase his bonuses, and he happily is going to sign as the number two driver. And it won't be that big of a loss. The, the biggest loss will be the overtaking and the old which is going to cost us a bit in the um, in the testing department uh, in the testing department and I will have to find someone else I could I could hire here I could hire me Casalo who has a bunch of skill and experience points he's a bit expensive but you know skill and experience I I don't know if I mentioned this but I should mention it now. If you want a test driver, you want someone that has high skill and high experience because that's what modifies the effect of testing. So Salo could be an option as a test driver. Um I'm trying to see someone else that has good skill or but no, I mean I'm definitely not it's not gonna be big enough. I'm not gonna spend twelve million for a test driver. It will be McNish, who has just less experience than Salo, but it's also cheap, 600k less. So that's options to consider if Alonso to sign, and I have to sign Bordeaux. And maybe Bordeaux is out of a seat for after, after this year, because I don't manage to get him to a seat because Alonso accepted. Anyway, for commercial department, I went for either David Ring or uh, I don't remember right. Uh, for for ring or right, probably gonna go for ring. I have to increase the salary and royalties, of course. For design, I try to get Rory Byrne or Gary uh, Gavin Fisher. And the reason for that and why I don't stick with Rinland is that I'm going to introduce a rule right here and let me show you what that rule is. So you remember this: the design, which I should actually start uh, right away. I didn't change this. I should actually change that in a moment. Um, the new rule is uh, to be able to, to get how much progress I'm going to get here. Uh, this is to make a future. Future years more difficult because this is a pretty easy game when you have everything set up. To make future years more difficult, I'm going to take the designer's ability, that is three, plus the facilities uh, level. I'm going to add them up, and that's the progress I can fill up here. So right now, in theory, I could only fill up the design bar to five. The only exception will be if I initiate the design for the 2004 regulations are put out. I can fill up the progress bar as much as I want. But if the regulations come out, 
and our car is illegal, I have to restart and that, like I just explained, is going to come in effect. Don't worry, it's more intuitive than it sounds. Don't worry, it's going to make sense. <laughs> I'm going to make it make sense. So, for that reason, I want a better designer for this. Yes, they are more expensive, but I want better chassis. For engineering, I went for every single level 4 because level 4, I'm going to try to get Willy Ramp. If not, Patsons is level 4 and he's cheap, but I might go I might go for New Wii simply because he's saving New Wii. Just, just, just because it's him. And for mechanics, Gibson did not do a good job in the previous year, so I'm going to go for Whitley. A bit more expensive, probably going to have to do the same for two years, but he definitely does the trick. Okay, so in New Wii, I have to fix this before the start of the next... Uh, Next race because I need some people here in the 2000. Anyway, um, testing plan. Pretty interesting. Here's the testing plan: 139 miles, 32% setup, 10% development, 48% research. Uh, this is in the test program for the drivers. The testing, and we get that for development. I did show the percentage in the previous episode. Here is the percentage, I care, 57%. I did not do the time to show it in the previous episode, so I had to use the editors to be able to show it, but it was there. Research. Use the research. Use the research. Please FIA. It did not go through, but it, it's okay. It will be fine. We'll do traction control testing and we'll get traction control in the future. Uh, and we have three bars there, that's, that's, that's perfectly fine. And I have just enough uh, mechanic time available to be able to fix both car number one and car number two. I set up a uh, half spare part to spare. So, uh, as for commercial, 10% on Marlboro, 10% on West, and 6% on Lucky Strike should give us the contracts they want to offer us. Remember, we want these boys, and if not, we want to go back to the because we have no other choice. And they should really talk to us because we were third in the Constructors' Championship last, last year. Reynolds, of course, we're going to talk to Reynolds, 8% on them to get them to talk to us. We definitely need a Reynolds deal. And I think uh, you know, I have to really invest in those deals before... Uh, yeah, I'm going to split up my strategy. I'm going to go for both team and engine sponsor at the same time. Talking with Michelin because French, uh, nothing on the deal. And I'm looking into negotiating with Parmalat because it's what it is. Acer because it was here a long time ago. 555 because British American, uh, British American money. And Norto because Norto. So there's that. So percentage into hospitality. I could increase the catering and celebrities, but I do not know how much cash we're going to make. I need to see uh, Mel Melbourne is always the most expensive Grand Prix. And I want to see if we're actually going to make some cash after Melbourne. Which we should. Again, we're going to get uh, uh, sponsorship. We're going to get 2.2 million a race. The thing is, I don't know how much we're going to, to spend. We're expected to make 60 million. We should not wait. We should not spend like 60 million this year. So there's that. This, of course, be very inaccurate because we have not done races so far. Now, setup. I just reminded myself that I have not done testing, so I'm gonna have to do the usual seamless transition that you don't notice. It's gonna be perfect, but for now, I have not done testing. So, what I'm gonna do here first, yeah, I'm gonna see if hard of the soft tire does the one soft strategy on this. I'm gonna put some tarmac points. And three dust points for Alonso and one for Bernoldi. Remember, Alonso is our number one, Bernoldi is our number two. Just, just draw the short end of the stick, man. Sorry. Uh, again, we're gonna see which tires make it, which are the most efficient. I don't think we can get full pit stop rating. Yes, not yet. Okay, so don't make mistakes so that you're more to slow down. And I think. Jordan, we cannot get their, their active suspension. I definitely need to active suspension. We that's the only driver aid we don't have, active suspension. But we're 
it. And in the meantime, while I'll do testing, I'm going to be fixing these percentages. So let me just fix this so that we have the proper uh, rating. Fix that. And we did fix that, fix that, and fix that. Confirm those orders, confirm the setup, the sample running for this Grand Prix. Sure, confirm the assembly, why not? Uh, bigger priorities are ready, so save the game. So, let's get in there. All right, boys, and ooh, it should be fine. Uh, all right, boys and girls, so here is the 2003 competitors list. Of course, the Michael with the number one, as per. Uh, unfortunately for this one, I couldn't change Weber and Coulthard's orders in the editor I have because the editor is uh, not perfect and at times it doesn't show some drivers and if it doesn't show a driver, which it did happen with Weber, I cannot change the order. So. It's gonna be Weber with the number three instead of Coulthard, as it should have been. So you have Ferrari, McLaren, Williams, uh, Ferrari, McLaren, Williams, Prost, Sauber, Jaguar, Minardi, Benetton, Arrows, Jordan, and VAR. Look at Minardi ahead of some people, which, yeah, amazing. Don't worry, Olivier, we're gonna save you from, from, from Flavio. Don't worry, we're gonna get there. Also, light rain. I was not prepared for rain. We might see some people not qualify for the opening race. That's gonna be quite funny. But what I'm gonna do is simply I'm just gonna wait. I'm going to wait until the skies clear out and we can do some laps. For this one, we're both gonna be running the soft air. The soft air can easily make uh, the strategy we're gonna run, which is a one-stop strategy. Yeah, we can we can we can just get in there like that. It looks like it will be Ferrari versus McLaren. Um, Giancarlo Fisichella takes pole position from David Coulthard and Mark Weber. Look at this. 548, 568, 569. So Weber, despite not being that good in ratings, he is very, very, very close to Coulthard right away in the opening in the opening round. Then you have Michael Schumacher, whose final lap was interfered by uh, Luciano Berti. Otherwise, it would have been closer to this bunch. And then you have us. So that performance we had at the end of the year where we were fighting for uh, poles and second rows and so on, it has not left us. We are very much there uh, fighting Ferrari McLaren if they ever have a misstep. Then you have the Benettons of De La Rosa and Panis. Big gap between them. Then you have the Saubers of Marquez and Alesi. Big gap between them. I think Alessi put down a lap in the intermediates and it worked out. Bertie, uh, no, uh, Jaguar Bertie, Bertie's just slow. Uh, he interfered on Michael's lap. He was on the drives, but he got in and that's what matters. Then you have the minority of Button in 12th. You have Barry Kello, Raikkonen, Williams. I guess I guess these are wet weather lap times, otherwise it doesn't explain why these boys are so slow. Uh, Verstappen splitting the Jaguars, then you have the arrows of Frensen and Elf, and then you have Truly. And like I told you, there will be people missing the opening round. In this case, it will be Jordan and BAR. Okay, so the big objective of this first race is, of course, beating Sauber. And overall, that's the objective objective of the year, beating Saubers who are using the same engine as us. And uh, overall, at least two wins in the year shouldn't be much to ask, maybe three. If I'm pessimistic, we will get only two wins. If I'm optimistic, we will get four. And if I'm very optimistic, we will be fighting for the world title, but that's way too optimistic, even for the amount of upgrades we usually bring. We're just one step back to compare to Ferrari and McLaren. But it isn't impossible. Okay, so very dry, high wind speeds. Usually when it rains in the qualifying session in this country, in Australia, it rains in the race. So we're going to see what happens. Of course, for strategy, this race, this, this tire, you can make it 44 laps, the soft. 
so I can put any reasonably long stint and it should work out. So for Alonso, I'm gonna put it on 35 laps, make it shorter, 33, and it should be um, 25 laps. Yeah, that's reasonable. So sets three and four. I'm kind of willing to give Bernoulli a British uh, a two so a two stop strategy, very short stint, and then. Computer, 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 please stop doing that. Um, I'm very willing to like try to have Bernoldi uh, uh, hold a fort at the front, like uh, short field him, make him go uh, as fast as possible, then a decently long middle stint, and then a standard uh, final stint. And I'm actually going to try that just to see how good it is. Like short field him, and then... This star can easily go 24 laps, so yeah, there, and then a short final stint. You know what, let's go the other way around then, just 16 laps, not the other way, then up to lap 40 and then 18 laps, just to see how good Bernoldi is when I'm telling him to, hey, opening laps, just go push. This isn't actually an ideal strategy, you should like go one stop because this is Australia, but let's just test out things. Let's see how good it works. Let's get in there. Well, good thing I could save the previous file and begin this thing again because the wonders of living in a country with electricity problems. Anyway, 100% race speed, I managed to save the game in the previous attempt, so let's get in there raise the braking because we have to be able to overtake people uh, you too manage to overtake people please now get in there okay bernoldi is fourth can he hold on to fourth uh not quite not quite alonso do not try to make an overtake on bernoldi okay bernoldi's making moves though bernoldi passed mclaurin Okay, but please do not make a mistake that's gonna make us lose positions. Neither Bernoldi nor Alonso, both of them made mistakes. Mistakes have been made, it's, 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 it's fine. It's fine, a race is long. Well, Bernoldi, Bernoldi needs to... If he can make that position back, I will be very happy. But Alonso, Alonso is on a heavy fuel load. He is gonna try it, Alonso is gonna try it. Both make the move stick. So it is Fisichella, Michael... Uh, Weber, Bernoldi, cooled hard, uh, lower braking and lower acceleration because I don't want to run out of fuel. Put open and increase line defense. So it is Fisichella, Michael, Weber, Bernoldi, cooled hard, De La Rosa, Panis, and Alonso in the points. Everyone else is happy. Uh, you, you don't care about anyone else. All right. So, decent start. I was fearing that Bernoulli or Alonso were going to make a massive mistake and fall off the face of the earth, but they did not. So, we are blocking out Kulhar from going up and fighting the Ferrari, so it's up to Weber now in the name of McLaren. I don't really mind, I just you know, need to need to have good finishing positions, and I definitely wouldn't mind if Alonso what are you doing? Please increase your aggressiveness when blocking. I wouldn't mind if Alonso could catch uh, Bernoldi, uh, the Bernoldi train. Maybe he can't, but if he could, that would be very awesome. But I don't think he is. Remember, Bernoldi has like... How the fuel he has? So, yeah, not gonna catch it. It's like 1.2 seconds faster. It's just not happening. At the very least, Bernoldi is as fast as the front bar. Well, not quite. Six tenths lower? Oh, careful. Careful, Bernoldi. That little that little move there, it scared me a bit because I thought Bernoldi had crashed with Coulthard and that means Bernoldi was going to be out, or well, not out, but really damaged. But it really scared me. All right, uh, cut the recording. Time to wait until either explosions happen or um, Bernoldi has to be one or the other. It is Enrique Bernoldi's in lap, not much, please Alonso. Not much interesting has happened other than, uh, well, there's a couple things. Uh, first, Rubens DNF, he was uh, kind of closing the distance to Alonso, but thank you DNF. 
and instead of being chased by a British team, were being chased, chased by another British team in the form of arrows. Um, friends and Peter a moment ago, which, fine. But were still being chased by Ralph Schumacher, which, I mean, is good. It's just a different car. But Bernoldi right now has kept a very, very good pace thanks to being a short field, and there's the hope that he... Dang it, uh, dang it, uh, who, who are you? Pedro, dang it, Pedro, it was gonna be perfect. It was gonna be perfect, we were going to be ahead of that arrows, but now everything is screwed. Yeah, thank you, thank you, I, I, I really appreciate it. Maybe it would have worked. It would have worked. Well, at the very least, we're ahead of uh, Raikkonen. That's how I think. Who's that? A lazy. Yeah, and get past that Benetton, yeah, they're not problem. So, or only the real threats are... Williams and Arrows. Williams, because they're still pretty fast, even if Raikkonen cannot pass people, and Arrows because they're pretty fast as well. Williams, they, don't, they won't threaten us, at least this race, for the simple reason that... Well, Rubens DNF. But in future races, they might. As for Arrows, well, at the very least, uh, Frensen. Was it Frensen? Yeah, Frensen. He's not a threat this race because look how far down he is compared to us. I'm pretty sure anyone that pits this early is going for a three stop, but they might be two stopping. I don't know. Um, Frensen will be, won't be a threat, but Ralph could be. No, they're two stop. Ralph could be depending on what he on what he does. If he's one stopping, he might finish ahead of Bernoldi. It's still points, but I'd rather he not do that. If he's two stopping, then he shouldn't be a threat. Also, I see Giancarlo Fisichella has fitted, which means Michael's probably gonna win this race unless Mark Webber or David Coulthard are one stop in this event. Maybe Alonso can catch Fisichella? I doubt... Excuse me. I doubt... No, he won't. No, not gonna happen. There was hope in the air. There, there, there was a chance he could. There was a chance. Raikkonen finally passes uh, De La Rosa. So the <laughs> Good job, Kimi. Um, so I guess the next waiting point is gonna be when we go to... Uh, Alonso stop and when Alonso stop happens I can do the half race report so let's cut to that it is Alonso's time to pit which means it is the ideal time to do a full race report leading is let me show you leading right now is David Coulthard who elected to go on a one-stop strategy and for that reason alone he is completely unstoppable, as he should be. Second, you have Michael Schumacher. Third, you have Mark Webber. And fourth, you have Giancarlo Fisichella. All of them on two-stop strategies, so uh, we're not going to catch them. None of them is on a three-stop. I think they are on two-stops. Uh, fifth was Fernando Alonso, who right now is going to pit. He's going to drop to at least sixth, probably seventh. Let's see. Uh, yeah, 6th, 7th, I mean 7th, depending on whenever he can pass, De La Rosa, no, 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 okay, so it's gonna be 7th at least for now, <clears throat> then we have uh, Bernoldi right here, he's on his 2-stop, he's like, he's, he's chilling, our only threat really is De La Rosa and either of these arrows, well, mostly, uh, Oh no, that's Ralph. That's 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 Ralph. He's too stopping. He's gonna be it again, so he's not gonna be a concern. So right now, uh, Prost is running on an island. Like there's no one to fight with us other than uh, De La Rosa, and De La Rosa has to beat again because he's on a two stop. So it's not really that much of a fight. Ah. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure 
that everyone that is in the points right now, it's going to finish in the points. Also, freaking... The, the, for some reason, the Jaguars struggle to let us pass. Like, every single time, we go up to a Jaguar and he simply does not let us through. And I hate him for that. Like, just get out of the way. It, can be that, it cannot be that hard. But no, the elect to block us. Alonso, come on, you need to make... You, you, you need to pass people. Come on. I know they are... I'm pretty sure they are fighting, but you need to pass them. Can you do it? Yes, you can. Good job. Okay. Now, time to hunt down the Delarosa. Delarosa has been again, so it's not that big of a concern. Uh, the only real fight is in the stopwatch between Bernoldi and Alonso, because... <clears throat> remember, Bernoldi has to beat again, so he might... Uh, overcut uh, Alonso. I doubt it, but it's a possibility it could happen. Time for uh, Bernoldi to pit, and I am assuming that Mr. De La Rosa is not going to ruin this. A while ago, Michael Schumacher pit, and now Physical is pitting a while ago. And Weber did not pit, which is a bit concerning for Ferrari. Because both were ahead, well not both, but Michael was ahead of Weber. And now he's not going to be ahead of Weber if Weber goes too long. No issue for Bernoldi, and he's going to be behind Alonso, but on much fresher tires. More importantly though, he's right ahead of Ralph Schumacher. Which is pretty much that's 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 just beautiful. Now the only thing we need is for De La Rosa to pit again, and we should be fifth and sixth, which will be points in 2002 and will be points in 2003. But even more because, like I mentioned in the previous episode, we uh, thanks to Grand Prix World Edit, I managed to edit the exit, which means we now get the top eight scoring points, like it was in this time of Formula One. So there's that. I don't see Weber pitting, so Ferrari might be in trouble. They might only have one car on the podium. That's going to be just Michael. <clears throat> we'll see, we'll see. And Ralph Schumacher goes on and pits, so he's not going to be a concern. It's only straight up uh, Alonso and Bernoldi fighting for fifth and sixth. I'll see you a bit later then. David Coulthard has entered his final lap while we haven't done so yet so it is michael schumacher uh, michael schumacher david coulthard from mika hacking what's going on with me hacking is retired um david coulthard from michael schumacher followed by giancarlo fisichella and mark weber that's your top four after that you have fernando alonso and enrique bernoldi bernoldi was actually much faster in this final stint but I told them to hold position. I don't want them crashing or anything. Also, because you know who our lead driver is. Anyway, after that, we have Kimi Raikkonen and Pedro de la Rosa over here. That's our final point scorers. David Coulthard wins the opening race of the season, uh, mirroring what actually happened in the actual 2003 race. Except, of course, Mika eh, Mika. Again, well, it's, I was going to talk about someone finished. Except Kimi Raikkonen is not at McLaren, he's uh, at Williams. But anyway, Coulthard wins from Zemaiko and Fisichella. Weber is fourth. We just need to get home to finish fifth and sixth, seven and eight. Uh, yeah, Raikkonen and, and Dela Rosa. So, good opening race for us. It went much better than 2002, that much is guaranteed. It went considerably better. Let's go. Points. And not just going to be uh, like 1 and 2. Thanks to the 2003 system, we're going to get more points than that. Excellent result, boys. So, again, confirmation. Coulthard wins from Schumacher, Fisichella, Weber. Then you have Alonso and Bernoldi, Raikkonen and De La Rosa. After that, you have the arrows of Ralph and Frensen. Then you have Panis, Alessi, Trulli, Berti, Verstappen, Marquez, Button, and Barrichello DNF with an electronics issue and was the only casualty of this race. Irvine Matsakane of Jordan and Montoya and Sarasan of VAR did not run this race because 
they cannot do laps in the wet. So, 10 points for Coulthard, 8 points for Michael Schumacher, 6 points for Fisichella, 5 for Weber, 4 for Alonso, 3 for Bernoldi, 2 for Raikkonen, and 1 for De La Rosa. McLaren going to lead this championship for now with a single point over Ferrari, and they have twice as many points as Prost, who are now third, which we finished last season third, so what's the difference? Then you have Benetton, uh, Williams and Benetton, with two and one points respectively. All right. We have made a profit, which means I can put as many points as I want on... Uh, hospitality no problem there what else do we have I lost a mechanic and uh, in between episodes I changed some of this stuff now we have an excellent designer because I need to start moving people up and the low morale of the mechanics which has finally been fixed is now at a hundred percent and I'm gonna fix that I'm gonna put uh, 50 people here and as that morale moves up I'm gonna move more people up Speaking of moving people up, I have to do it here. So start removing trainees so we can have averages. Let's see, can we get another average? We're going to keep looking at, at, at the emails in a moment. But I just need to start moving people up. Can we get someone else? Not quite. Actually, scratch that. Um, move someone to very good, then someone to there, and yes, I know, then someone to there. Good. Engineering. Can we get more people? No. So move on someone there and move someone there. We need to start getting like people in the excellent and stuff. Uh, this has been already modified, so no problem there. Let's see. We're ready to upgrade the car with. Um, I can't remember if we had some technology or driver ready to build. Anyway, um, we did enough to learn how it is. They want more setup and development and research testing. Not that many research testing. It is risky, but with the new rule they have, if the uh, chassis design goes well, um, we're going to get a good design anyway. So a new car to the specifications. We need more spares. I know. Wind tunnel at the workshop, that's good. Lucky Strike, Renault, Paramount Debris Support. We have the Unus Advantage. Lucky Strike West and Marlboro told us the deal they want to have with us. Same with Michelin and Renault and Nortel and Acer and Paramalat and 555. Got some points, we gotta get some more. We scraped the point, you are lying. But uh, the thing is, the game doesn't acknowledge that the top eight now get points. So even though we got six, we just scrapped a point. Um, it's a thing with the game. Don't 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 get too bothered about it. And of course, the sponsors are really happy with what we did. Coulthard added another race win. Bernoldi got points. Alonso came fifth. New we went to Williams. Whitley went to Ferrari. That's not great. Physical led the race. Uh, Great went to McLaren. Simmons went to Pro uh, to McLaren. No news about Panis, which is very good for us, but uh, where is it? Uh, sad about Whitley, because I'm pretty sure he's the only level 4 manager uh, mechanic. Uh, same, uh, same with Wright. I, 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 no, I wanted David Ring. Remember, I wanted Ring, so Wright, it's, it, it's not a big deal. Simmons might be, but uh, it, it, it'll be fine. Uh, fastest lap by DC. Rory Byrne goes to Ferrari, it's fine, it's fine. McLaren has traction control. Her talking to Ak uh, Ekren Sami and Ross Braun. Best manager is of course the Montezemolo. Who will have known? Okay, so who remains? Uh, Ring, who, who we're gonna go all in. Yeah, it's just David Ring. In the designers, it's gonna be Gavin Fisher. We need to get the guy. Even if it's just for two years, we gotta get the guy. In engineering, it's just Willy Ramp. We gotta get the guy. We just go and get our guy. Whitley sadly got signed, so we're only gonna get a level 3 chief mechanic. We... We, we just gotta deal with it. Uh, which I'll do in the... In, in between episodes. Not in between episodes, but in between recordings. 
Same with uh, same with what I do every uh, I do my testing and stuff, and then I come back and and show you what I did. But for now, nothing new, of course. Um, traction control has not moved because I have to put a bunch of people in the hydraulics and a bunch of people in the 2004 car so that it starts moving. Um, let's see. Let's deal with commercial first and everything else I can deal later. Cannot talk with the Lucky Strike because someone invited them. Apparently that is okay. Um, let's bring Michelin. And let's bring Norto. I guess. Um... I mean, it's pretty obvious who we're going to sign as our title sponsor for next year, right? The one that's offering us two seasons and the highest cash offer, like Lucky Strike, 26 million, West, 31 million, Marlboro, 22, uh, 32 million. We already have our future secured thanks to Marlboro. Renault, of course, only have partner deals to offer, so we're gonna go all in on that partner deal. Uh, Michelin is offering us a, a two-year deal and a works deal as well. We're gonna go all in on that one. I'm gonna put this at one percent for now, so that I can see how much staff we actually have to distribute. And these other deals, it's 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 fine. We're just gonna take everyone away from those because important, the, the the important deals here are the team and the engine and possibly. The tire and especially the tire because you know how much I hate these completely terrible soft tires that do not last a thing so if we get this work still we get better tires because I can make them better uh, let's see you boys didn't find anything you're useless Okay, let's upgrade the hydraulics, upgrade uh, this, uh, upgrade the spares, uh, build more spares, we're gonna need them. Build those spares, build another one, so we're gonna be able to run with an extra spare. Um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna end with enough cash to upgrade the factory, but I'll deal with that in Japan, not here. Anything else I need to do? Of course, I need to start issuing deals to everyone that's here. So let's start doing that. I will issue every single deal that I have in mind. And then I'll come back to you and show you the results of said uh, contract negotiations. All right. So let's review the initial moves that I've done so far. First, in the drivers. I managed to sign Olivier Panis to a two-year deal as our number one driver. I threw a bunch of money his way. Three million, uh, basically three million, 3.1 million, 50, uh, 50K if he wins a race and if he wins a championship, which it's the objective, this man is going to get 820,000 only if he wins the championship, plus the race bonus, of course. As for second and test driver seats, I still can't get anyone. I've tried to get Alonso into the seat. I tried to get Alonso into the seat, but um, I cannot approach him again. But um, he's not happy with that with that role. He does not want to be second driver, which is reasonable considering he's the number one driver right now. I still can sign Bordeaux, who will still be pretty decent, but meh. I could sign Mikasalo. <clears throat> I could sign Mikasalo to that role. He's very skilled. He has good experience, but I'd rather have Bordeaux there, and then sign Salo or Magnish into the test driver role, where I can use their skill and experience, and have an all French uh, main driver lineup. Even if you know Salo will be a better, better choice in that in that second seat. I managed to bring David Ring. I am giving him. I'm going to give him 500k a year and 5% of every deal he personally signs to be our commercial manager. And that's in the end, I think a bit cheaper than Fraser, who we have right now. Bit more salary, but less royalty. In design, I threw a bunch of money Gavin Fisher's way. I, I had to, otherwise I would have had to stick with a level 3 designer. 
And even though Sergio Rinland has done an amazing job for us, it, it was not going to cut it. So, $2 million a year, which is over double of what Sergio Rinland was getting, double what Rinland was getting in raise bonuses, $37,000. And, oh my goodness, nearly, the, nearly 10 times as much championship bonus as Rinland. $800K if we win a championship for two years. So, Gavin Fisher gonna welcome you to the team in 2004 and I hope you build an amazing car for us otherwise we're gonna be very screwed oh by the way I started moving people around in the uh, in this table both commercial and design engineering I had no choice I threw a bunch of money uh, Willie Ramsway 3.5 million five times over what Duran was getting well nearly five times it's 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 the money of quality um, bunch of money more than what Duran was getting for race bonuses, and uh, but five times as much as uh, Duran was getting in terms of championship bonus, six hundred k. That's plenty cash. We're definitely gonna need that 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 Marlboro deal, deal because Jesus Christ, are these uh, expenses gonna go up? We're definitely gonna need to save up cash this year. As for mechanics. I couldn't get anyone to accept. First, I started uh, sending some feelers to Stepney and Giles. None of them are going to accept a two-year deal. I sent offers to Gradley, to Baglarini, Edwards, and Gibson. Only Edwards is willing to accept a one-year deal, not even our, our own guy. I only want to give two-year deals because I want to sign someone else. So I'll be looking into signing Edwards. Unless anyone else decides that they want a one-year deal. So there's that. At the very least, one of the objectives of the campaign is going to be sealed. And that is Oliver Panis, a French driver, being our number one driver and championship contender. Just want to see here how much money we spent. We spent. It's mostly a construction. Most of our income is coming from, of course, the team sponsor. All right. Um, over here, I did my setup test. I did my testing overall. 169 nice miles. 19% setup, 3% development, 34% research. You need a lot of research testing. 50-50 for the race drivers. 10-10-80 for Bordeaux. That gave us full development and full research and full setup which I invested into um, the development. Let us see that we have understeering fast corners. Brazil is a slow track. I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to increase speed. Understeering fast corners, so we're going to have increased tire wear in fast tracks. Uh, speaking of fast tracks, which one is a fast track in this? I think San Marino is... San Marino is fast. We're going to get additional tire wear in San Marino, but... I'll ride when I get there. Uh, so we're gonna work on that so that we get that finish uh, fix for Spain and increase performance for Spain. I added some more work on hydraulics because I don't want to have issues with the hydraulics anymore. That is not fixable. Remember that. Uh, traction control, I I want to get level three tra traction control, but that will happen when it happens. And design, I'm just gonna let that car fill up until the 2004 regulations come out. And they tell us whenever our chassis is legal or not. Build some spares, spend the spares, 16% wear for the cars, that that should be fine for the track. As for here, 36% on Marlboro, that should uh, help us get that deal signed. And I'm going to invest a success advantage on Marlboro right away, same with Renault. This should help us get the rental deal at least to two squares. Same with this one, which should be around here. We definitely need to actually um, leave Norto alone, bring Marlboro. Maybe that speeds up the deal. I just put 1% here so that I can get a lot more percentage on everyone else. And put a bunch of rating into catering and celebrities so that the quality doesn't go down. So that it still benefits us. Um, for Tyra, I put 27% on Michelin. It should be 29, but... Okay, I didn't remember it. should be 29 to get this to one block, but uh, 27 will do. 
And I just put everyone in one here because I need to talk with everyone else. Which is very important as you as you should know. I could sell some shares for some extra cash, but we don't need to sell shares at this point. We are self-sufficient in terms of cash money. For this one I'm gonna need to check, but I think the hard tire could be a thing because of the slow tarmac. Actually for setup I'm gonna put two rain to tarmac and Alonso is gonna get the remaining points I'm gonna put them in dust confirm the setup I'm gonna do my testing and as per usual I'm just going to do the transition so that you do not uh, so I can do my testing in peace and calm and then come back with a proper race setup and besides it's like 8.30 p.m. I usually record earlier, but I had more stuff to do. So, yeah. Anyway, on to Brazil we go. All right, Brazil. 2003 Brazilian Grand Prix. I just hope that this one doesn't go crazy like the real what the real life 2003 brazilian uh, brazilian grand prix did or at least if it, if it does we end up doing a jordan so dry conditions low wind speed for the qualifying session i'm gonna be using the soft tires for this one the soft tires if carefully managed can make it 40 laps and the strategy is just barely fat you know what The strategy is just barely faster on the soft, uh, the one stop, compared to the hard. And now I'm having second thoughts because they are the same speed. Well, basically, it's just the soft is just a tiny bit uh, faster. It would be faster if the tire was more resilient, but it isn't. Let's get the soft. In case it rains, I can actually rely on the softs. All right, let's get in there. So, with the final 10 minutes of the qualifying session being rained out, it means that Crichton Squarehead has managed to get pole position, followed by Giancarlo Fisichella, and then Michael Schumacher, and then Fernando Alonso. Fairly good lap time, just two tenths away from the Michael, half a second away from Coulthard, but, 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 the car is performing fairly good. Fairly, fairly good. Race is gonna be different because this is a long race, and in long races we tend to not do as well. But we'll we'll complain when we get there. Then you have Barrichello, Weber, and Bernoulli in seventh. So it's not just a Fernando thing, although he put three tens on Bernoulli, De La Rosa, Montoya, and Panis in the top ten. Uh, the big people that will threaten us are well, McLaren, of course. Weber's gonna get through no matter what. Uh, Barry Kello is a big threat, so we're gonna be like 6th and 7th until we start fighting with the Benettons and the BARs and Raikkonen as well. Maybe the Arrows get their act together and manage to fight us, but we'll see. The thing is, we're so high up because we're using soft tires instead of hard tires, and all of the AI use hard tires. If we use hard tires, we will be like 6th, uh, 6, seven, uh, six tenth or something like that. Overcast conditions, I was hoping it will start rainy because that would have been extremely good for us, but you cannot have everything. Soft tires for both of the guys. Bernoulli, I'm kind of willing to give a two-stop strategy. I'm fairly... I'm going to give him a two-stop. It's going to be first 18 laps of fuel so that he can gain some places, then a 32-lap stint and then a 22 lap stint. The reason for this initial stint is that, is that so that he can gain some places and keep up with the front pack, then the 32 lap stint to get him to uh, to set him up for the final round, which will be 22 laps. Alonso, I'm just gonna give a standard one-stop strategy. I'm gonna set him to pit in lap 36, but I want him to have a bit more fuel. The reason for that is so that we can have a slightly shorter final stint. So two stop for Bernoulli, one stop for Alonso, and hopefully Alonso can actually make it work. 
because the tires can only make 40 laps. Even with all the tarmac I put, the tires are just terrible. So, he should be able to make it as long as he doesn't overheat the tires. Otherwise, Bernoldi is going to end up ahead. Anyway, let's get in there. Lower this to 100% and save the game. All right, push your acceleration. I want you to overtake people. I want to see some overtakes. I want you to be ahead of people, boys. Come on. And yes, block. You too, Bernoldi, block. Luciano were to make some mistake. Fernando Alonso is second. He's gonna drop. He's not gonna drop. Good job, Fernando. So, Fisichella from Alonso, from the Michael, from Crichton, from... I don't see who's there. I don't see who else is there. But anyway, it's time to lower this and time to lower off racing line as well. Time to lower this and lower off racing line. I cannot put off racing line to 10 like I used to be able to because the suspension will then give up and I cannot afford that. All right, so this was a far better racer than I would have expected. Like, um, usually you need to short fuel your people to be able to get good race starts. Alonso uh, didn't care about that. He just got a lightning start which, you know, Reynolds things in this time and age is great. Uh, Bernal, I was gonna say Bernal lost a place, but no, he did not lose a place. Also, I do not want you burning the tire when it isn't the right time to burn the tire. I also got a big gap over the Michael. What's going on? <laughs> What's happening there? All right, lap one, Alonso is second in this race. And if he keeps this up, He's gonna back everyone into Bernoldi. And if he keeps backing everyone into Bernoldi, by the way, good job, Luciano Berti. He keeps backing everyone into Bernoldi. Bernoldi makes places. And if he gets to third, I'm just gonna wave Bernoldi through so that he can gain some time on this uh, on the Fernando train. Because a Fernando train is going to form, which is gonna be good for Prost overall. Uh, it's also gonna be very good for uh, Mr. Fisichella. Ah, come on. It's gonna be very good for physical as well because as long as they are trapped behind Fernando and they're gonna be trapped behind Fernando for quite a while, they will not be able to catch him. Um, Fernando, uh, Fernando is not that fast, so there's that. Also, Bernoldi lost a place, which is no, not what I wanted. Anaros is gone. I just saw it. Yeah, it's Ralph. Ralph is gone. Good job. All right, lap three, and here's where I cut the recording. I will keep doing this micromanaging to be able to have the guys pushing and at the same time save their tires. So I'll see you later. Hopefully not when one of our guys DNF. Hopefully when uh, Bernoldi makes his stop. All right, it's time for the news. First of all, um, it's raining. It just right now started raining as physical across the start finish line. More important, at least for now, more important than that, however, is the fact that Bernoldi is going to pit in this lap. And even though uh, Alonso put down uh, the defensive drive of his life, Bernoldi couldn't quite make a big enough gap. Come on, Alonso. Do not, do not, do not let that Williams escape. Uh, he put the defensive drive of his life, but uh, cool, uh, cool her still went through, the Michael still went through, um, Weber still went through, Rubens did not go through, Rubens did not go through, Michael is going to pit, so there's a chance we actually beat Michael Schumacher on merit and pace. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. No issue from the pit crew on Bernoldi's stop. Where is he gonna come out? That's a big question. There goes Michael. It's gonna be behind Alonso again. Should be in between the Sauvers, I think. Yep, right in between the Sauvers. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, Alonso Ford. Bernoldi 11th, which isn't ideal, but I think we can work with that, especially if Alonso keeps defending like his life depended on it. Bernoldi on fresher tires could close up. However, 
Yeah, that's 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 exactly what I was going to say. If it starts raining and going intermediate, it's 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 not gonna work. And as you can see right now, it's not gonna work. So load ten extra laps of fuel. Actually, Bernoulli doesn't need the that much extra fuel, so just put two laps. Whatever happens, happens, man. I that I tried, I tried. I was too smart for myself. I was too smart for this game. I did my best, but at the very least I put some points in rain, so it shouldn't be that terrible. Can we get Alonso? No! Kimi, what have you done? Kimi, why, why do you have to be this much of an idiot? Why do you do this to me? Anyway, um, Bernoulli, come on, get, get, get. Get that moves done. As for you, Alonso, you need to also get moves done, please. Because Kimi decided to ruin everything. At the very least, Alonso right now is better in the wet than Kimi and has a better car in the wet than Raikkonen. So he should be able to get through. As for Bernoldi, he should be able to get past that uh, Sauber. Well, he can't, but he should. As for Alonso, he's stuck behind Kimi. Yeah, this 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 turned into a disaster. Finally, Jesus. Yeah, Bernoldi Bernoldi got royally screwed. Yeah, I shouldn't put that much fuel on on Bernoldi because it might turn into full wet eventually, soon, most likely. Everyone's pitted. At the very least, we're gonna gain some positions with Alonso. Who who is still interfering with 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 Alonso's uh, rightful position in the track? That Sauber. That Sauber is ruining everything. And there's a refueling issue with. Did I? Just two laps. Come on. Why does he have to? Why do they have to make this so difficult? Who is blocking Alonso? Who is that Sauber man? Who, John, get out of the way. You're old. You're slow. You need to get out of my way. Where's Bernoulli? Thank you. This has gone just so wrong. <laughs> On so many levels. It's amazing, actually. And it's now very wet. So I, I was waiting until it became very wet to start actually talk, uh, talking again. Uh, let's see. I need Alonso with an extra lap of fuel. Hopefully there's no issue on his stop. Same with Bernoulli's stop. Hopefully there's no issue. So the little update is that Mark Webber had an issue and was forced to DNF. Uh, Brakes issue, yeah. Also, I did not remember to point this out. Montoya and Panis crash into each other and as such DNF. And now we are at the mercy of the pit crew yet again. Um, we're gonna see why aren't you coming in? You need to come in. You need to pit. That's the only way we're gonna catch anyone, if you pit. We should be fine from any other uh, pit stopper. Luciano Berti made a mistake. He ignored Blue Flux. Jack got caught. It, it, okay, that one is not that big of an issue, unless... Okay. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. We're fine. Get it, okay. We're gonna start yelling, get it unstuck. But Bernoulli is also gonna be uh, coming into the, to, to the pits. As long as they keep go. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Bernoulli getting the short end of the stick. It's fine. In pits. Can you get him out? Nope. Nope. Bertie with a 10 second stop. Uh, what's the term I'm looking for? By the way, we didn't get the, the, the Pits of AOK Carl Living Pits uh, message. Which, okay. Alright, uh, speaking of things that have happened, uh, Michael has not been his usual destructive self. He has not put like three seconds a lap on physical, which is interesting. For now, uh, Tarso Marcus Pits. Um, for now, Alonso's objective is just to catch. Mr. Uh, Barrichello and Bernoulli's objective is somehow to get back into the points. He needs to catch a lazy right here 
and he's working on beating uh, Raikkonen. It's not gonna happen just now. It's gonna happen over here because this is the uh, the overtaking spots in this track are this straight, this corner, uh, at times this area, um, this corner, occasionally. There we go. Bertie is gonna keep ignoring blue flags. I get it. Uh, yeah, this corner and this corner, and he got past Raikkonen now. Now it's time to get a lazy. I was hoping a lazy will pit and then it will be no issue, but it did not. So we move on. We move on, I suppose. So uh, plenty of action, and this episode is already an hour long, I think. All right, so we've managed to get some stability going. Uh, among the stable things are Luciano Berti getting another 10 seconds stop top penalty for uh, ignoring blue flags. So there's that. So it's time for the health race report. Good job, Enrique. So uh, first, let me lower all of the orders because I've been having the guys like just take five and chill. So um, physical is leading this race from Coulthard to Michael. Alonso, Barrichello, Bernoldi, those are the top six. Here are the boys, here is Alonso, here's Bernoldi, Bernal, uh, the, the, the top three. I have not seen them go into the pits for wet tires, so we're faster than them, but it's because they don't have wet weather tires. We, uh, they are in intermediate, we are on wet, that's why we're fast. Uh, Barrichello, you don't think, has been on the pits for wet either. Then you have Frensen and De La Rosa as the other uh, drivers at the points. Alessi and Verstappen, two very good wet weather drivers. They um, have not pitted for wet, which is why they are down low. Otherwise, they will have... I was going to say knocked those out of the points, but... No, they will not have. Al uh, Bernoulli will be eight, but that's about it. Uh, if there's any positive, it's that since we're beating a lazy, we can say that we're beating one of the best wet weather drivers in this month. He's actually a full five wet weather points, so he should be pretty good, but we'd have him beat. So there's that. Uh, it stopped raining quite a while ago, so it should turn into intermediate situation in a few moments. Also, Alonso has cut up to the Michael, so we should be able to start engaging him in a... The Michael Pitts, so he goes for wet tires at the worst possible time because soon enough it's gonna turn to intermediate, so he's gonna take the big L here. So we are net third place. You know what? That's 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 pretty good for me. Third place, Bernal is not gonna catch him though, and depending on how long this goes, the Michael might actually catch back to us, so that's a bit of a concern. But in any case, we are third. Uh, the Michael is going to try to catch us back, which he will because he's Michael Schumacher. Um, I think I'll see you later either when the pit stops start. Uh, yeah, it'll probably be when the pit stops start and we have to go to intermediates. Now Rubens goes into the pits. He gives up. Gonna move Bernoldi all the way up to fifth now. Good. All right. Things are looking up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a very interesting situation is developing here now. Uh, remember, uh, Michael beat a while ago, he put on wets, and the track did not try enough, so the wets are still very effective, which means Alonso is second and catching Fisichella quite quickly, but the Michael is on wets, and he's the best wet weather driver in the game, and Luciano Berti pits again. And he and Michael Schumacher is catching Alonso at an amazing pace because he's the Michael, he's inevitable. In the meantime, Fisichella is serving as a roadblock, despite being the leader to Rubens Barrichello, who is on wet and trying to hunt down Bernoldi, but because he's behind Fisichella, he cannot pass the lead lap car. Uh, so Barrichello is a lap down, trying to catch Bernoldi, but he can't because Fisichella is just too slow. So the interesting situation is, Alonso is going to pit in a moment. And if it changes, like, I don't really want to pass Fisichella before Alonso pits. Because if it changes to Inter, I'm not going to have enough time to adjust that. Uh, 
I really don't know what I want. If I wanted to go Inter, and that way Michael Schumacher is deactivated, but Fisichella is in a better position, or I wanted to stay wet, then Fisichella finds pace. I don't know which is beneficial to us. And it's a tough situation coming up, boys. Uh, it's a tough situation. Let's 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 advance a bit. And now it happens that Fisichella calls his own shot. He goes to the pit for Inter's or uh, not Inter's wet, and that means we have to make a decision on our own. So here's the situation. I could gamble on Inter's, and if the gamble is right. Michael is gonna pit again, or we're gonna beat him, like, out, outright. And that will be that, because he'll have to pit again for intermediates, while we're just gonna either cruise up to him, or wait until he pits them, pass him that way. We'll have to fend him off, but... Worse things have happened. Or, we stay on the safe strat, which I think I'm gonna do. Stay on the safe strat, go for wets, and just keep uh, reacting to whatever happens. And I think I'm going to do that. Really, the only one that wins in this situation right now is Bernoldi, Because Bernoldi can actually react to the situation. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's going to stay wet. If Michael crossed the line and it's changed... Um, and it changed weather from very wet to wet, I would have had to pit. I think physical is gonna beat us, but it's not that big of a problem. Oh no, he doesn't. He doesn't beat us. We're ahead of Fizzy. We got him. Okay. At the very least, we got him. And Ricky and Ricky Bernoldi, get out of the way. This is not time for you to be ahead of us. Okay, thank you. He got out of the way. All right. Next up will be Bernoldi, and I really doubt we can actually keep Fisichella behind us for the entirety of the race, that will be 24 laps. <sighs> nope, he failed already. Come on, up breaking. Let's, let's see if we can actually get him back. Maybe he can get him back. I know you're in traffic. Your traffic is only one car, what are you complaining about? I don't think he can get him back. I think it's still a Ferrari 1-2. It does remain a Ferrari 1 2. Damn it. <laughs> Alright, couldn't quite get Fisichella, but at the very least, we're third. And now it's up to Bernoldi to pit. Let's jump ahead to that. Okay, Bernoldi's turn. And again, the decision is either to gamble on the Inters, which, as we saw with Alonso, it wouldn't have worked because it stayed wet. Um, but at the very least, I could have reacted if it was going to stay wet. With uh, Bernoldi right here, I cannot gamble that. Because if it goes Inter in the middle of his stop, I will not be able to react to that. But Because by the time they actually are fitting the tires in, is when Michael is going to cross the, finish, the start finish line and I'm not going to be able to react to that that fast. So I'm just going to default to the Wets, not the Inters. And hope it actually works out. I hope it does work out in the end. We're gonna see. Forty, come on! Okay, Irvine pits for, I think that was fuel. Okay, it stays consistent. No, we cannot get him out. Dang it. And he's gonna get passed by Barrichello right there. Forty, bro, how? How you get dinged by this? Oh, ah, I don't get you, man. So many penalties for you. You are like 17 laps down or something like that. I don't get it. There he is. Alright, sixth. Up ahead is Barrichello. I don't think we're catching him unless Barrichello has to pit again. Which he might, actually. But the thing is, if he has to pit again, he cannot change weather. Otherwise, we're completely screwed. 
because it's just gonna be able to get into the inters and just just run away which it's not what it wants also Alonso is still under the threat of David Coulthard over here he could catch and beat him for the last step on the podium which of course I don't want goodbye Matsukami and the situation is still very wet we're gonna finish this race in like wet conditions I think only way, only way to find out is just letting the race go by. What failed? Great. Part failure for Alonso. That means goodbye podium. David Kulhar goes to third and we're probably going to have to scrap the car. Alonso just DNF'd. Ah. Now, the question is, will Bernoulli have a part failure? Because I'm pretty sure Alonso still had blocks of car condition and there was no issue. It's just a random car failure that happens when you have some wear in the car. Which it might also happen to Bernoulli, I hope it doesn't. I do distinctly remember that I showed doubt about the fact that Michael Schumacher went for a three-stop strategy over anything else, but in the end the man is leading the final lap of the Brazilian Grand Prix and it's gonna win the damn thing. So don't doubt the Michael and Fisichella managed to keep it together, finish a second. Well, it's gonna finish second barring any last second DNFs like it happened with Alonso. David Kulhar is going to be third, and it's clear those three are going to have an amazing championship battle. Oh, come on, Bertie! Those three are going to have an amazing championship battle, which we're probably, probably not going to be a part of, unless our upgrades are amazing and we run into a lot of luck. So, Michael is going to win the Brazilian Grand Prix. Second, his teammate physical at third, it's going to be David Kulhar. Fourth, is going to be Rubens Barrichello. Not bad, my man. Fifth is gonna be Bernoldi. Sixth is gonna be De La Rosa. No, Alesi. Alesi ended up sixth out of nowhere. Then you have De La Rosa. Then you have Jarno. Truly is gonna score a point. <laughs> Minardi points. Minardi points. Thank you to the top eight point system. Thank you for everything. Minardi is going to get points. Great job, Minardi. Great, but, I mean, look at this, this, this mess. This mess of BNFs. Thanks to that, and Luciano Borti running into every single stop go penalty under the sun. Thanks to that, Minardi is gonna score a point. Minardi. Welcome to Formula One. Michael wins. Here's the confirmation. Michael wins from his teammate Fisichella. They were running information for the last couple of laps. Kulhar finishes third and only the podiums on the lead lap. Then you have Barrichello, Bernoldi, Alesi, De La Rosa and Trulli scoring a point for Minardi. That's the, that's the main reason why we all should celebrate. Then you have Raikkonen, also Trulli beats Raikkonen. Trulli is a hero of our times. I was gonna go with something else but whatever man. Um, just the stopping intent. Um, Here's a bunch of DNF. Borti DNF on the final lap, but I think uh, just saying driver is just enough to describe his his race. Alonso with a part failure, very unlucky of the guy. That usually doesn't happen. Finishes 12th, but not qualified. Here's the rest of them. It was going to be a 4th and 5th, but car betrayed us. Michael takes the lead of the championship, followed by Coulthard with 16 points. Physical at 14, then Bernoulli with 7 points, a tie for 5th between Barrichel and Weber, then Alonso with uh, with 4 points, he's 7th. Um, this is definitely going to change in the future races, because Alonso should be here, not Bernoulli. That is fixable. Ferrari with a considerable lead, 32 points over McLaren, 21 points, Prost with 11th, lovely to see Minardi there. Uh, where did Trulli ended up, actually? because I did not see him there. He's 11th with a single solitary point. Very good for the guy. Very, very happy for Minardi now. One point for Minardi as well. Good, good, good. Uh, not there. Uh, we're still making profits, 500K, great. Panis is gonna join us next year and he did sign a contract, same with David Ring, same with Gavin Fisher, same with Willie Ramp. 
uh, of course, some demor uh, people is demor demoralized because we're switching people, but they will be back up to spec soon enough. Carware, I know. Handling issue, they want uh, Alonso want more setup. Bordeaux wants more, more, more everything basically. FIA regulations mean that our new chassis design is not legal for next year. We should start again. That's unfortunate. We're gonna have to abide by the new rule I in, I, I, I in place, and our car is not gonna be as good as it could have been. Ready to upgrade the car. We have upgraded the car. We should manufacture more spares. I, uh, I agree. Renault has increased support. Elf reduced support. Doesn't matter. PSN reduced support. General Electric. Yeah, I don't mind about uh, Lucky or West Marlboro. And uh, Renault is where everything is should be focused. Every, everything we will improve everything. Just don't 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 worry. I don't care about licensing. Uh, points, pit stop issues. Don't worry. And yeah, the the the, the profit. So there's that. Uh, Michael wins again. DC got pole position. Uh, Alonso got a DNF, but that's sad. Ferrari are going to punt away Michael Schumacher to bring Ralph Schumacher. What in the world are they thinking? Okay, Panis is going to go to Prost. Bernoldi, Bernoldi is going to, to Benetton to replace Oliver Panis. So, good luck, Enrique. I'm going to try to get you a win so that you can say this, this, this was a very good year for you. Uh, Joss is going to Arrows now. To replace Ralph. And Joss is in Jaguar. Michael, where are you going? Where will you end up? Maybe he doesn't end with a seat. Maybe he just goes to, I don't know, DTM or something. He doesn't race in Formula 1. I don't know. Yeah, Gavin, just pros, just, just, just pros news. Ugh. FI, I hate you. Of course, Paul Stollard, manager of the month for Minardi. That's everything right with the world. <sighs> so what do we do here? I could no. <laughs> I was gonna say I could sign Michael Schumacher, but <laughs> twenty-five million a year, we don't have that kind of cash. Alonso, will you stay? He will not stay. I don't want to offer Berno, uh, Bordeaux a seat yet. Um, what now? The mechanics morale, I'm not gonna move anyone in mechanic until the morale goes up a bit more. Also, I need to sign someone here as well. Whoever will do the trick, man. <laughs> anyway, let's see what else we have here. First, I have to reset this and start work again. So, for this, uh, the 2004 chassis, I can only go with uh, at least the design phase. Three points from Rinland, two points for a facility, I can go only go up to five. So, I have to be very careful that this only goes up to five. That is complete, good. That is complete, good. So I don't have to worry about our hydraulics anymore. Let's put that in the car right away. And build as many spares as we can. I need to get like five spare parts. And it's gonna be pretty expensive. We're not gonna make a money, any bit of money next year, uh, next race. But I'm gonna build a car that gets get us rid uh, that gets rid of one of the cars that we had that were worn, and I just fix the other one up. And now we can do testing. Um, what now? I really need to start investing into power brakes because we need to be able to overtake people. Um, no one brings upgrades just yet, which sad. Now, what, uh, how are we doing here? Two blocks of Marlboro, that's very good. Just one block in rail, it's not that good, but gonna have to deal with it. Still cannot talk with uh, Lucky Strike. Um, General Electric, I don't mind General Electric, it's, it, it, they're fine. Keep talking to Reynolds so that that negotiation goes a bit faster. Everything that remains is doing the usual testing, no development because we don't need to development anymore. We'll have like to have uh, or chassis with legal, but it's not gonna happen. As for this thing here. 
maybe throttle. It's definitely gonna be throttle because I need to increase uh, fuel efficiency. Even though the Renault already has amazing fuel efficiency, we have to do our part. Uh, so I think that will be it for this episode. Can I keep 10% on everyone? No. Okay, time to go to our shopping list and see who do I have to... Who I can steal 8 from. I could steal active suspension from Ferrari, from Jordan, power brakes from McLaren. Let's go with Ferrari to see if we can steal their their active suspension. Maybe we can. Put everyone there. I'm not gonna move any more people from pit stops just to get active suspension. I just I don't care that much about active suspension. Alright, save the game. That will be it for this episode. Like Honestly, great start of the year, even with that Alonso DNF. It was a very good start of the year. I hope we can keep this momentum going into Argentina and San Marino and into the rest of the year. Hope you enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTuber stuff. I keep saying that. And there's always that coffee link if you really like to support what I'm doing. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you on the next one. Also, position 7.7 .7 over here, position 4.4 .4 over here. I find that funny. See you on the next one, boys.